time we direct your attention to the third baseline as we begin the 2013 Kent State Baseball Commencement Ceremonies. Jason Michael Bogoli. Bogoli is a finance major, graduating summa cum laude. Evan David Campbell. Campbell is a four-year starter and is receiving his degree in business management. Justin Joseph Gill. Gill was a bullpen staple for the Golden Flashes from 08 to 2011 before playing two seasons of professional baseball after signing with the Houston Astros. He returned to Kent State to complete his degree in human movement studies with a minor in athletic coaching. Justin Gill. And we also saw presenting those diplomas downstairs Dr. Deb Spike, who represents the College of Business Administration. She's the dean. The payoff. Strike three call. Delayed call by Paul Lancaster, but Regner is rung up. And we will give away a lawnmower here in inning number one. Well, it starts with pitching, and Taylor Williams uh, was, was very good. That's what he's done all year long. He threw a lot of strikes, and Brian Clark came in and competed and uh, played good defense. Pitching and defense is going to win a lot of games, so I thought our kids really competed hard. Taylor's been our most consistent guy. He's been like that all year long. And, you know, you look back, he maybe had one bad outing all year, and, and that's really a pretty good outing for a lot of people. So, yeah, he's, he's been great. Uh, as our number one guy, you need a guy like that that's consistent, throws a lot of strikes. Kent State with a lead. Here's the pitch, and it is lined to right field, and Derek lays out to make a great catch. Felt like it was going to be a pitcher's duel. Foley's very good. He's a legit number one guy. And, you know, our plan was to try to run the pitch count up a little bit, and we did that. We were able to get him in, get him out of the, uh, the game after the sixth inning. And I thought our kids uh, had some good two-strike approaches. And I thought we fouled off some pitches. They did too early with Taylor Williams. Both pitch counts got run up by, uh, by some pretty good at-bats. The windup and the one-two offering. Alex hits a little roller. Weakly hit left side. Into the hole. Oliver sets, throws, not in time. Alex beats it out to start inning number five. We're playing much better, no question about it. And, uh, you know, the, the, the Buffalo series was disappointing, but it is what it is. It's past us, and that's what we talked about. We can't hit the rewind button. You have to move forward, and you have to play. And, and uh, you know, I, I thought we've we played really hard today. And, and, again, when you pitch and play defense like that, you're going to win a lot of games. I mean, the basic thing is come out and throw strikes and catch the baseball. It's, it's really simple. It's not that hard. And, uh, you know, our guys made it look difficult early in the year but we've settled down and we're starting to play the way that we're supposed to play and the way we're capable of playing and, and I think they feel that way too. Here's the payoff pitch. Strike three called game over. And the Flashes have won seven in a row as Brian Clark picks up save number seven. And the final score of this one, Kent State four, Central Michigan one. I think we could have added on a couple runs there. We had some chances to, to add on a couple runs and, and give us a little bit of cushion. That's being greedy. I mean, four to one, you got a three run lead and you got Brian Clark on the mound. You got to be pretty happy with it. But anytime you get a chance and an opportunity to score a run, we got to try to do that. On the third base line, please join me in standing and welcoming home to this home ballpark several members of the 1993 Mid American Conference champion, NCAA regional semifinalist. Kent State, Golden Flashes! And now Scalina compounds matters defensively. Trying to get out of it, and he does. Into the glove of Tommy Monnet. The strikeout ends the first, but an unearned run is on the board. The 2-1. Swung on a little muscle shot on the infield. Second hop base hit. Boy, once it took that second hop on the shortstop, Oliver, Evan with a line drive, base hit into left center field. That's going to tie the game. Toad Vine is in. It goes toward the gap, and it allows Evan to go to second base with a game-tying double. Leonard is ready. He fires. And Robert slashes one to right to give the Flashes the lead. Scoring is Poland. Campbell will be held. Think about when he says, with two strikes, just find a way to put it in play. Bagoli takes down low, ball one. Well. The ball game might be on the line right here. Bases loaded, one out, on a deadly fastball hitter at the plate. Flashes lead by two, the pitch. That's a breaking ball strike to even it up, one and one. 
Let's see if Pagoli can do something to get this big crowd out of its collective seat. The 1-1. He bounces one back to the mound. They'll come home for one and on to first for a double play. How about that? From the first inning on, we did a very poor job. We left way too many guys on base, and uh, we had opportunities to score runs, and we just didn't do it. And, uh, you know, we, we allowed them to hang around. That's exactly how we lost to Buffalo three weeks ago, a game that we were winning, really dominating the entire time, but didn't execute, didn't execute, and they crept back in it. And, and uh, you know what, they had to tie and run at third base with one out, and, and uh, we we're very fortunate to get out of here with a win. We played back on our heels a lot early on, and, uh, and, and really, what you saw today, we did a lot of that. I mean, th this wasn't uh, a masterpiece by any stretch. We, we had chances to score a lot of runs and we didn't do it. And, uh, you know, we got to get better. And that's what I just told the guys in the huddle that, you know, that's to be a championship team, you have to play like one all the time. And, and we didn't play like one today. We were fortunate to win, but we didn't play like a championship team. I mean, coach talked about it after the game. That game should have been, you know, 15 to three. We left so many runners on base, just, you know, first and third in the first inning with no outs and two guys strike out. It's just things we need to clean up and get those runs in and just turn the game completely different way. Hoping for one more pitch from Eric Dorsch. The 0-2 pitch, a swing and a miss. A strikeout will close out the Chippewas. And on a night where they pay tribute to the 1993 champions of the past, the flashes of the present take another step. They have won eight in a row, it is a final score of six to three. The two one, swung on, shot up the middle base hit into center field. And they get the leadoff batter on. Fifth inning, Kent State has been blank to this point, but has bases loaded with only one out. The set and the pitch, swung on, shot up the middle to the shortstop, the flip to second one, double play, no safe at first. Zalewski beats it out in the... Here's the one, two. Swung on a base hit to center. Here's Zalewski around third. Here's the hold sign as the throw comes to the plate. So the bases are loaded with two down. Well, the problem is Bogoli hit it too hard. One in the first, three in the second, one in the third, two in the fourth, three in the fifth. Ten. There's a high pitch, one and one. Ten base runners in five innings. They have left 23 men on base in the last 13 innings. That's astounding. The 0-1. Swung on a high drive into right. Not deep. Sutton is there. Shields his eyes. Makes the one-handed grab. Just disappointing the way we play. I mean, that's not very representative of our program. To come out and play like that on senior day, we've got four great seniors that have had uh, an unbelievable career here. And to make four errors, to make mental mistake after mental mistake, to, to not have great at bats when we needed them, it's just really disappointing, it really is. And uh, you know, it, it's been a roller coaster ride. It's been very up and down. And, uh, and I think it's very representative of, of how we played on Friday to how we played today and two different teams. And in order for us to be a championship team, we've got to figure out a way to be consistent. And you know, right now, we're, we are just an inconsistent baseball team. We have to go on to the next game, but yeah, it's certainly something to be concerned about. You know, our guys are tightening up with guys in scoring position. We haven't had good at bats. We have great at bats right now with nobody on base. But uh, all of a sudden, guys get on base, guys tighten up, guys struggle. And, uh, and it's been going on all year. It's not just the last couple of days. It's gone on all year long. In order for us to be the team we want to be, we're, we're going to have to do things the right way. We're going to have to play uh, with a purpose. We're going to have to have better approaches at the plate, in the field, on the mound. Everything that we do, we're going to have to do a better job at. And, you know, uh, again, some days you watch us play and we look like the 27 Yankees. And the other times you see us play, we, we don't look anywhere near like a championship team. And it's frustrating. And with two down, here's the pitch from Gamble. A swing and a pop-up. On the infield, and the second baseman, McKenzie, grabs it. And the ball game, and the season is over here at Schoonover Stadium. The final score of this one, Kent State falls to Central Michigan by the final score of 8-2. to two.